In question one, I'll start with the left hand side and I will convert these fractions into a proper ones. So I've got 16 over 5 times 11 over 6. Then I will simplify 16 with 6. I will have 8 and 3. And if I multiply, I'll get 88 over 15. And this is 5 over 13 as a mixed fraction, which is equal to the right hand side. In question two, I'm given four whole numbers, and these numbers are A, A, B, C, and this is the order they appear, A, A, B, C. Now, I know the mode is seven, so the A's here must each be equal to seven. Also, the median is 8.5, so the mean of the middle two numbers is 8.5 so 7 plus b over 2 is 8.5 which means 7 plus b is equal to 17 b comes out to be 10 and finally the mean is equal to 9 so 7 plus 7 plus 10 plus c divided by 4 must be 9 so 24 plus c is equal to 36 c is equal to 12 so 7 10 and 12 are minus 3 missing values on part of question 3 i need to show this inequality on the number line now note i have an less than or equal sign for minus 2 and the less than at one so i'm going to have a full circle at minus two open circle at one and join this with a straight line and then for part b the integers that satisfy this inequality are minus three minus two minus one zero one and two In question four, speed is given by distance over time. Now the distance is 433.5 kilometers. Now for the time, I have three hours and 24 minutes. A common mistake is to put this as 3.24. Now the correct way is to convert this into hours, which is three hours and 24 over 60. If you want, you can simplify this to 3 and 4 over 10, or as a decimal, 3.4. So any of those values will do the job. And put this on the calculator, and you will get 127.5 kilometers per hour. In question 5, I will use the volume of the cuboid to find the value of x so volume of cuboid is equal to 12 times 5 times x so 270 which is given is equal to 60 x x comes out to be 4.5 so now I can find the volume of the cylinder. This is equal to pi r squared h. In our case, pi times 4.5 squared times 9. This will give me 729 over 4 pi. And as a decimal to the nearest whole number, this is 573 centimeters cubed. For part B, recall that one meter is equal to 100 centimeters. So one meter cubed is equal to 100 to the power of three centimeters cubed. And this will be equal to one million so my answer is one million centimeters cubed. 
Note, I can write this one as 1 times 10 to the power of 6. Both of these are correct. In part A of question 6, I'll start by taking the 5z to the left. So a plus 5z equals c over y. Now we'll cross multiply y a plus 5z equals to c. And that's the final value. When you write it down, make sure you put the c here. So c equals y a plus 5z. Now for part b, g to the 0, anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1. And finally, in C, we need to factorize. The two factors are x minus 8 and x minus 3. In question 7, I have an interest rate of 2.4%. This translates to a multiplying factor of 102.4% over 100 or 1.024 so my final value is equal to the original one times the multiplying factor to the power of 3 because I have 3 years so this is equal to 50,000 times 1.024 to the power of 3 and this is equal to 5, 3, 6, 8, 7 to the nearest integer. For question 8, I'll start by finding the interior angles of the pentagon. Now recall, for a regular polygon, the interior angles are given by the following formula. So the interior of the Pentagon is equal to 5 minus 2 times 180 over 5, which is equal to 108. So these angles here are all 108. More specifically, I'm interested in those two. Now, similarly, the interior angle of a regular hexagon is given by 6 minus 2, 180 over 6, which is 120. So these angles here are 120. So now I can use the fact that the angles on a straight line add up to 180 and find this angle 1 and 2 here. So Let's go below D, E, J is equal to 180 minus 108, which is 72. Let's write this on the shape. So this is 72. Similarly, D, I, J is equal to 180 minus 120 which is 60. So this angle here is 60. And finally, angle EDI is equal to 360 minus 108 plus 120, which is 132. So this is 132. So here I have a quadrilateral. The sum of the angles in a quadrilateral is 360. So x equals 360 minus these angles here. So 72 plus 60 plus 132. And this will give me 96 degrees. For part A, the highest common factor is the product of all the common factors to their lowest power. So I have 2 to the power of 6 times 3 to the power of 1 times 11 to the power of 4. 
this is equal to 281072. For part B, 2a is 2 times the value of a, which I'm going to take from above. And then this simplifies 2 to the 9 times 3 to the 5 times 11 to the 4. 3 b is equal to 3 times the value of b from above. That's 2 to the 6 times 3 times 11 to the 8, which simplifies 2 to the 6 times 3 squared times 11 to the 8. And then the lowest common multiple are all the factors to their highest powers. So 2 to the 9 times 3 to the 5 times 11 to the power of 8. In question 10, I'll start by dividing the shape into a rectangle and an isosceles triangle. Now, for the rectangle, I can easily find the area that's 6 times 10, but for the triangle, I'll need to work out the height, so I'm going to split this into half and create a right angle triangle. And I need to find the height of this triangle. Let's call this x. Now, note that the base of the big isosceles triangle is 10, so the base of the blue triangle is 5. So to find x, I'll use Pythagoras' theorem. So x squared plus 5 squared equals 7 squared. x squared is equal to 7 squared minus 5 squared, which is 24. So x is the square root of 24. Hence, the area of the whole thing is the area of the rectangle plus the area of the triangle. And the area of the rectangle is 6 times 10. Now, the area of the triangle is the base, which is 10, times the height, which is square root of 24, over 2. And this comes out to be 84.49 and so on. So the number of teens required is equal to 84.49 and so on divided by 16, which is the area covered by one teen. And then this will give me 5.28. Hence, I will require six teens. In question 11, I'll start by completing the cumulative frequency column. So the first one is 8 plus 15, 23, plus 17, 40, then 68, 101, and 120. Now in part B, I need to draw a cumulative frequency graph. I will use the upper bounds as the x coordinates and the cumulative frequency as the y coordinates and because everything starts from zero i will start from zero zero so basically when the frequency is zero the time is zero so let's go to the next page and plot the points now you can join the points either with a smooth curve or with straight line segments like I'm going to do right now. For part C, I need to find an estimate for the median. Now, n is 120. If I divide this by 2, I get 60. So I need the 60th observation. I will go on the vertical axis, locate 60, and find the corresponding x value. So from the x-axis, you can see that this number here is 18.5. Every small square is 0.5. And this is an estimate for my median. Note that the mark scheme accepts answer between 17 and 20. For part D, I need an estimate for the percentage of the 120 people who said they waited longer than 23 minutes. So here I'm going to do the reverse. I'm going to go and locate 
23 on the horizontal axis, which is here, and then find the corresponding y coordinate. Now, the reading on the y coordinate is 88. Every small square is equal to 2. So, 88 is the cumulative frequency. Now, I need the people that waited longer than 23 minutes. So, I'm going to take the total and subtract 88. This will give me 32. And because I want this as a percentage, 32 over 120 times 100. And this will give me 26.7%. The mark scheme accepts answers between 25 and 29%. For part of question 12, I will apply the power of 1 over 2 to each term separately. So 16, 1 over 2, e to the power of 10, 1 over 2, f6, 1 over 2. Now for the first one, the square root of 16 is 4 because power of half means square roots. So I've got 4. For the second and third, I will multiply the powers. So I get e to the power of 5, f to the power of 3. For part b, the lowest common multiple of 4 and 3 is 12. So I'll multiply the first one by 3, the second one by 4. So I get 3 times 2x plus 1 plus 4x minus 2 all over 12. And if I expand the numerator, I will get 6x plus 3 plus 4x minus 8 all over 12. And if I simplify the numerator, this will give me 10x minus 5 all over 12. For part C, note that 4, 16, and 2 are powers of 2. So I will write 4 as 2 squared and 16 as 2 to the power of 4. So I get 2 squared to the power of k plus 3 is equal to 2 to the power of 4 times 2 to the power of k. Then on the left-hand side, I will multiply the powers. So 2 to the power of 2k plus 6 is equal, and then on the right-hand side, I will add the powers, so I will get 2 to the power of 4 plus k. And now, because I have a single base on the left and a single base on the right, I can equate the powers. 2k plus 6 equals 4 plus k, and if I rearrange, k will come out to be minus 2, which is my final answer. For question 13, to find AC, you'll start from A, go to B, and then from B, go to C. Now, A and B is 5, 3. Now, note BC is the reverse of C and B, which means that BC is equal to minus, minus 2, 4, which is 2 minus 4. So, this is a plus 2 minus 4 which will give me 7 minus 1, and this is my final answer. For question 14, I will use the alternate segment theorem to find this angle here, which is 39, and then I will use the fact that opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral add up to 180 to find the required angle which comes out to be 123. So let's write this down with reasons. So B, F, D is equal to 39 because of the alternate segment theorem. And then B, D, E is equal to 180 minus 18 and 39, which comes out to be 123 because opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral add up to 180 degrees. And this is the final answer for this question. 
for part A of question 15, note that this number, let's call it x is equal 4.5757 and so on. Now the repeating pattern is 5 and 7. Let's put this in a box. Now this begins exactly after the decimal, so this is exactly x and it ends to position afterwards. So here is 100x. So what I'm going to do now is write 100x, which is 457.57 and so on. And then below this one, I'm going to write the x, which is 4.57 and so on. And then I will subtract those two. Note that the decimals cancel out. So 99x is equal to 453. So x is 453 over 99. You can simplify these as 151 over 33. And as a mixed fraction, you get 4 and 19 over 33 as required. Now for part B, I'll start by rationalizing the denominator. So 2 over 6 minus 3 root 2 times, and I will multiply by 6 plus 3 root 2, both top and bottom. Now expanding on the numerator will give me 12 plus 6 root 2. Now the denominator is the difference of two squares, so I'm going to have 6 squared minus 3 root 2 squared. Everything else cancels out, hence I get 12 plus 6 root 2 over 36 minus 18. That's 12 plus 6 root 2 over 18. And I can factorize the numerator, 6, 2 plus root 2 over 18. And when I cancel out the 6 with the 18, I get 1 and 3. So this is equal to 2 plus root 2 over 3, which is in the required form. A is equal to 2, B is equal to 3. In part A of question 16, I'll start by expanding the last two brackets. So this is equal to x plus 4, x squared plus x minus 2x minus 2, x plus 4, and then simplifying gives me x squared minus x minus 2. So now let's expand these two brackets, x cubed minus x squared minus 2x plus 4x squared minus 4x minus 8. And if I simplify, I will get x cubed plus 3x squared minus 6x minus 8, which is the final answer. In part B, I need to complete the square. So I have x minus half of 10, which is 5 squared, that one, minus 5 squared. And then I have a plus 40 as well. Let's simplify x minus 5 squared minus 25 plus 40. So this will give me x minus 5 squared plus 15. In question 17, I will rearrange the first equation to get x on its own. This is equal to 6y plus 5. And then I'm going to replace the x in the second equation by 6y plus 5. So I get 6y plus 5 times y minus 2y squared equals to 6. Let's expand 6y squared plus 5y minus 2y squared equals to 6. Let's take everything to one side. So 
So I get 4y squared plus 5y minus 6 is equal to 0. Now I can solve this quadratic in any way I want. I can use complete the square, factorization, or the quadratic formula. I'll go on with factorization. So I get y plus 2. 4y minus 3 is equal to 0. So y is equal to minus 2 or y is equal to 3 over 4. Now I'm going to substitute these values into this equation to get the corresponding x values. So x equals 6 times minus 2 plus 5 gives me an x value of minus 7. And the second one is x equals 6 times 3 over 4 plus 5. This gives me a value of 19 over 2. So if I group my solutions, I get x equals 19 over 2 with y is equal 3 over 4. Or x equals minus 7 with y is equal to minus 2. In question 18, I have a histogram and I need to find an estimate for the mean. Now, to find an estimate for the mean, I'll need to find the frequencies. And because I don't have the frequency density, I can either figure out a way to work out the frequency density or work with the areas of each bar. And I think this is easier because I have a clear histogram. So I'm going to go to the next page and add another column. I'm going to call this column number of big squares. So for the first bar, I have 14 big squares. So if you count these squares here, you're going to see that there's 14 of them. And then I can do this for all the bars. I have 20 for the second, 15, 12, and finally 18. Now, you can see that the frequency is twice the number of squares for the first one. So I have to keep this for all the bars. So the second frequency is 40, then 30, 24, and 36. Now forget about the histogram. This is a grouped frequency table. I have the frequencies. In order to work out the mean, I'll need to calculate the midpoint of every group. So another column is needed, midpoint. So the midpoint between 0 and 2 is 1. Then the next one is 3. Between 4 and 5, I get 4.5, 5.5 for the next one, and 7.5 for the last one. And finally, I will calculate the column Fx, which is the product of the frequency and the midpoint, so this column gives me 2820, 135, 132, and 270. So to find an estimate of the mean, I will use the following formula. That's the sum of fx divided by the sum of f. The sum of the fx column is 685. The sum of the frequency is 158. And this comes out to be 4.34 hours in three significant figures. In question 19, I'll start by finding the lower and upper bound of every variable. So t is between 13.5 and 14.5. A is between 7.75 and 7.85. And H is between 3.35 and 3.45. Now, since I need the lower bound of K, I will need the lower bound of the numerator over the upper bound of the denominator. This is equal to the lower bound of t. And then to get an upper bound in the denominator, I need the 
upper bound of A minus the lower bound of H. So I need to use the 13.5, the 7.85 and the 3.35. Let's substitute these values in. So 13.5 over 7.85 minus 3.35 and this comes out to be exactly 3. In question 20, I need to find the minimum speed. Now, to find the minimum of something, I need to differentiate that quantity and set the derivative to zero. Now, I don't have the speed, but I can get the speed by differentiating the displacement. So, V is equal ds dt. So, this will be, and now I multiply the coefficient of every term by the power and reduce the power by one, so I get 3t squared and then minus 18t plus 33 t to the 0 so just 33 the minus 6 disappears is constant now this is the velocity this is the speed to find the minimum speed i need to differentiate again this quantity now the derivative of the speed is equal to the acceleration this is 6t minus 18 and for a maximum or minimum, I will set this equal to 0. So 6t is equal to 18. t comes out to be 3. Now, this is the time when the speed is at a minimum. To find the actual speed, I will need to replace t with 3 into this expression. This is the expression for the speed. So let's write here minimum speed equals 3 times 3 squared minus 18 times 3 plus 33 which will come out to be 6 so my final answer is 6 meters per second in question 21 I'm given quite a lot of information now if you are unsure where to start then start writing formulae and expressions based on the information you are given. Usually you will figure out what to do once you write everything down. So let's see, we are given that u4 is equal to 6. So let's write an equation for u4. We know the following about arithmetic sequences. So by using the first formula, I get u4 is equal to a plus 4 minus 1 d so u4 is equal to a plus 3 d but i'm given the value of u4 so 6 equals to a plus 3 d so this is the first equation i have now i'm also given that u6 is somehow involved in this whole thing so re let's write down an expression for u6 u6 is equal to a plus 6 minus 1 d so u6 is equal to a plus 5 d i might find this useful so if i use this equation now let's write this down with the u6 i found so s11 is equal to u6 squared plus 18 so S11 is equal to A plus 5D squared plus 18. Now if I expand this, I will get S11 is equal to A squared plus 10 AD plus 25D squared plus 18. Now I have a formula for the sum which I can use to get another expression. So let's find SD using this formula. So I've got 11 over 2, 2A plus 11 minus 1D. Now if I simplify, S11 is equal to 11 over 2, 2A plus 10D. 
and if I expand, I will get 11a plus 55d. Now, because I have two expressions for S11, this must be equal so I can create an equation a squared plus 10a and d plus 25d squared plus 18 is equal to 11a plus 55d. So this is an equation that has two variables, a and d. Now, somehow I need to eliminate one of those two letters. And the way to do so is by using this thing in blue. I can rearrange this one to get a on its own. It's going to be 6 minus 3d. So I can go back and replace all the a's with 6 minus 3d. So 6 minus 3d squared plus 10, 6 minus 3d times d plus 25d squared plus 18 equals to 11, 6 minus 3d plus 55d. Now let's expand 36 minus 36d plus 9d squared plus 60d minus 30d squared plus 25d squared plus 18 is equal to 66 minus 33d plus 55d. Now I can simplify the left hand side. Now the these squares I've got a 9 here, a minus 30 and a plus 25. So this will give me 4d squared. Now then these, I've got a minus 36, I've got a 60, and this simplifies to plus 24d, and then the numbers give me 54, and this is equal to 66 plus 22d. Now I can bring everything to one side, 4d squared plus 2d minus 12 is equal to 0. I will divide by 2. So 2d squared plus d minus 6 is equal to 0. Now I can solve this either using factorization, complete the square or quadratic formula. I'll proceed with factorization. 2d minus 3 and d plus 2 is equal to 0. So d is equal to 3 over 2 or 1.5 if you're working with decimals or d is equal to minus 2. Now, note at the beginning, I'm being told that all the terms are positive, so I can have a negative difference because at some point I'll get a negative term. So I will reject this one and keep the 1.5. So now I can find the value of a, 6 minus 3 times 1.5, a, also comes out to be 1.5. So I can complete this question by finding u20, which is equal to the value of a plus n minus 1 times d, which comes out to be 30, which is the final answer. I'll start question 22 by making a rough sketch. Note that I'm not interested in the orientation of this shape. Next, I'm going to write down all the formulae and rules I'll be using in this question. So let's start by finding the coordinates of the midpoint M. So M is equal minus 1 plus 2 over 2 and 5 plus 10 over 2. This will give me 1 over 2 and 15 over 2. Now, next, I'll find the gradient of BC. So MBC is equal to 10 minus 5 over 2 minus minus 1. This will give me 5 over 3. Hence, the gradient of AM, which is perpendicular, will be equal to minus 3 over 
5. So now I can find the equation of the line AM. Y equals MX plus C. And the gradient is minus 3 over 5. I will substitute the coordinates of the midpoint. So I get 15 over 2 equals minus 3 over 5 times 1 over 2 plus C. This gives me a C value of 39.5. So the equation is Y equals minus 3 over 5X plus 39 over 5. If I multiply everything by 5, I will get 5Y equals minus 3X plus 39. And if I take the X and the Y on the same side, I will get 5Y plus 3X equals 239. And this is my final answer.